This seminar is about a very sticky problem. The problem to which the Buddha primarily addressed himself, which is that of agony, suffering. But before we get into that, we have to be clear about certain basics. And these basics have to do not so much with concepts and ideas as they do with a state of mind. You could call it also a state of feeling, a state of sensation, a state of consciousness. And we need to understand that, even be in that, before we can really go very far. And this is an extraordinarily difficult state of mind to talk about, even though in its nature it's extremely simple. Because it is in a way like we were when we were babies. When we hadn't been told anything and didn't know anything other than what we felt and we had no names for it. Now, of course, as we grow older, we learn to differentiate one thing from another, one event from another, and above all, ourselves from everything else. Well and good, provided you don't lose the foundations. Just as mountains are differentiated, but they're all based on the earth, so the multiple things of this world are differentiated. But they have, as it were, a basis. There is no word for that basis, not really, because words are only for distinction. And so there can't really be a word, not even an idea, of the non-distinction. We can feel it, but we can't think it. But we don't feel it like an object. You feel you're alive. You feel you're conscious, but you don't know what consciousness is because consciousness is present in every conceivable kind of experience. It's like the space in which we live, which is everywhere. It's like a fish being in water, and presumably a fish doesn't know it's in the water because it never goes out. A bird presumably knows nothing of the air, and we really know nothing of consciousness and we pretend space isn't there. <laughs> so, however, when you grow up and become fascinated, which is really the right word, spellbound, enchanted, by all the things that adults wave at you, you forget the background. And you come to think that all the distinctions which you've been learning are the supremely important things to be concerned with. You become hypnotized, just in the same way as when the beak of a chicken is put to a chalk line, it gets stuck on that line. And so when we are told to pay attention to what matters, we get stuck with it, and that's what in Buddhism is called attachment. Attachment doesn't mean that you enjoy your dinner or that you enjoy sleeping or beauty. Those are responses of our organism in its environment as natural as feeling hot near a fire or cold near ice. So are certain responses of fear or of sorrow. They are not attachment. Attachment is exactly translated by the modern slang term, hang-up. It's a kind of stickiness, or what in psychology would be called blocking, when you are in a state of wobbly hesitation, not knowing how to flow on. That's attachment, what is meant by the Sanskrit word, klesha. So, when the chicken has its beak put to the chalk line, it's got a hang-up. It's stuck on that line. And so in the same way, we get a hang-up on all the various things that we're told as we grow up 
by our parents, our aunts and uncles, our teachers, and above all, by our peer group. And the first thing that everybody wants to tell us is the difference between ourselves and the rest of the world, and between those actions which are voluntary and those which are involuntary, what we do on the one hand and what happens to us on the other. And this is, of course, immensely confusing to a small child because it's told to do all sorts of things that are really supposed to happen, like going to sleep, like having bowel movements, like uh, loving people, like not blushing, stopping being anxious, and all sorts of things like that. So what happens is this. The child is told in some that we, your parents, elders and betters, command you to do what will please us only if you do it spontaneously. <laughs> and no wonder everybody's completely confused. We go through life with that burden on us. <laughs> so 